evening and welcome to Somerset County Library's Personal Enrichment Online. Tonight we're going to be talking about using virtual meeting platforms. And with people trying to maintain social distancing and not wanting to meet in person, virtual meetings have become the norm. <clears throat> If you've never participated in a virtual meeting before, it can be a bit intimidating. How do you get into the meeting? How do you communicate with others? You feel funny because funny being on camera. It's awkward talking to people you don't see. I don't know what I'm doing. Today I want to try to answer some of these questions so you will feel more comfortable participating in a virtual meeting. I'm going to show you some of the virtual meeting platforms that are out there and give you a little tour about how they work. They all work pretty much the same way. Things may be in slightly different places in the various platforms, but once you experience one, the other should be easier to figure out. So to start with. I am going to show you how to access our Microsoft Teams room, which is the platform that the library uses for their programs. And often, most of the time, you'll find the link for the programs that we're putting on, <clears throat> on Facebook. And let me just go back to, back to our, if you go to our Facebook page, and click on events. <clears throat> we'll see a list of the different events that are coming up at the library. And see this one is how to navigate the different virtual meetings. And I click on see more. And I provide you with the link here to our personal or our virtual virtual meeting room. All you have to do is click on that link. Now if you have Microsoft Teams on your computer, you can open it in your app, but if not, no worries. You can just continue using the browser that you're in. So there's no download, no installation required and just type your name in how you want it to appear in the meeting room. You can select if you want the camera on or off, so if you don't want to be seen on camera, you can go ahead and turn that off. And sometimes when you're joining a meeting, it ten tends to be good practice to have your microphone muted. That way you're not disrupting. If the meeting's already going on, you're not disrupting anything that's going on. And you can change that later. I'll show you how. And then you click with the join now. And if we're going to have an echo here. But as I was saying, when you go into the meeting room, you you may get a message that says to wait for someone to start the meeting that might be because they just haven't started started the meeting up yet and you'll be waiting in what they call a lobby and when the meeting does start whoever's the presenter or the organizer will be able to admit you they'll see you that you're waiting in the lobby and they'll be able to to admit you into the lobby okay so looking around teams. Let's take a look at some of the options that you have available here. This first icon show participants and that will give you a list of the people that are in currently in the meeting. And that, that's nice to know if you want to actually have a conversation with one of those people or your the one doing the presenting and you want to see if there's anybody in the room. Show conversation. Allows you to chat. 
So if you don't want to use the recorder or you don't have a microphone on your computer, you can just go ahead and type your message. And hit enter or send and then your message will appear. And then you can see if anybody else is typing in the chat, you can see any con any comments that are made in the chat. Okay, raise your hand. We haven't used too much with raise your hand. Um, more actions. This is where I'm currently recording this meeting, so I started my recording. You can do meeting notes. If you're in the meeting and decide that you want your camera on, you can turn it on here. If you want it off, you would turn it off there. And if your camera is off, this is what you'll see just like a um, generic icon. I have my picture associated with my account, so I have a picture up there, but it might just be like a letter and you can turn the camera back on if you want the camera on. If you entered the meeting muted, put yourself there. We also have the share option. So if you are in the meeting and if we're trying to help you figure out why something's not working, you wanted to share your screen, you would be able to share your screen. Mine is currently in the share, currently sharing my screen now. If I wanted to unstop sharing, I would click on that to stop sharing. And then of course, when you're ready to leave the meeting, you would click on leave. And that's basically um, Microsoft Teams. Once you get into it, it's not that difficult. I mean, it is a little weird sometimes, but um, not too different, too difficult. OK, I'm going to minimize some screens here. And then I'm going to talk about go to meeting, which is one of the other, which is another virtual meeting platform that's available. And let me just check my notes here. OK, so um, I can't show you an actual meeting because I don't have a, a meeting to be attending, but we can watch this video here in YouTube. And let me make sure that I am sharing my sound. There you go. And the ways to participate during a meeting. In order to join a GoToMeeting session, an internet connection is required. We recommend joining via a high-speed wired connection as opposed to Wi-Fi. To utilize Voice over IP, or VoIP, the computer must have a microphone and speakers. As a best practice, we recommend using a USB headset if you are to connect via VoIP. You may also connect to the meeting's audio via telephone. The meeting organizer will have sent an invitation containing a URL link from which an attendee can join the meeting directly. Also included will be the audio information and the meeting ID. Click on the link to join the meeting. Another way to join a meeting is to navigate to gotomeeting.com and click on join a meeting. Enter the meeting ID in the field and click here. If you 
you do not have the GoToMeeting software installed on your computer, you will join with the GoToMeeting web app through your browser. Though, you will always have the option to download the full software anytime if you would like. You will be asked to select whether you would like to join via computer audio, which is mic and speakers, or via the telephone. If you opt to use your computer audio, you will be asked to allow access to your microphone. If you choose to use the telephone, you'll be able to choose from any of the numbers that the organizer provided. Enter your name and email and click OK. If you have joined the meeting a few minutes before the organizer, you will be presented with the waiting to view the organizer screen window. Once the organizer arrives, that screen will disappear and the meeting will begin. This is your control panel on the top right. The settings icon will, again, give you access to all of your general audio and webcam settings. You can switch back and forth between telephone or VoIP here and can also view other telephone numbers available. Always remember to enter your audio pin when calling into a meeting. Without the audio pin entered, the organizer will not be able to unmute you. Click the webcam tab to share your webcam if you have one hooked up or built into your computer. Select the General tab to change your control panel language and view who is talking in the meeting. This second button down also allows you to share your webcam. All preferences for webcams can be accessed from the webcam window once it is active. This next button lists attendees in the meeting. You will see an icon of a microphone next to their name if they joined with mic and speakers and a telephone icon if they called into the conference. You'll see a red line through one of these icons if that attendee is muted. Click on this drop-down next to your name to mute yourself or adjust your name and email as it is presented to others. The chat window will show you any existing chat conversations from the meeting and will also allow you to send a chat message to individuals in the meeting, to the organizer, or to the entire audience. Just enter your message here, choose who you'd like to send it to, and click send. Other options below, including the question mark icon, will let you report any audio issues, send feedback, search our support database, and learn about the software details. Selecting this icon moves your entire GoToMeeting session from a windowed view to a full screen view. Finally, this icon will allow you to switch to the desktop version of the GoToMeeting software. This will give you complete GoToMeeting functionality. It will require you to download the software, however, you do not need to leave the existing session to switch to the desktop version. Doing this will allow you to share keyboard and mouse control and use drawing tools. Also, if the organizer requests that you share your screen, you will be prompted to download this full version of the software. Again, this will take place quickly while you are in session. Apart from being able to share keyboard and mouse, the full version of the software allows attendees to use annotation tools when made available. Thank you for viewing this GoToMeeting Attendee Quick Start. Best of luck with all your GoToMeeting events. Okay, so that was GoToMeeting. And you can see some, some of the features are exactly the same as what you find in Teams. Um, one thing that I didn't mention was that in Teams, we can also send you an email with the link to the meeting. So that is one way that you'd be able to access the meeting. And let's take a look at Zoom now. And Zoom is a popular platform that you've probably heard of. And Zoom has become infamous for Zoom bombing. You've probably heard that term, which is something some which is when someone enters the meeting and sort of just takes over, usually making rude comments or sharing something inappropriate on the screen. 
However, Zoom does have controls now that the meeting organizer can use to silence those individuals and kick them out of the meeting room. So here is a look at how Zoom works. And this tutorial video is about using Zoom for online meetings. This lesson is your very first Zoom meeting. How do you join it? First of all, what equipment do you need? Your laptop is perfect. It has a camera built in and it has microphone built in. Now, if you're in a noisy environment, you might want to use a headset instead or some earbuds, but today's laptops, the microphone that's built in is pretty good. So to join a Zoom meeting for the very first time, you do not need an account in Zoom. All you need is the meeting ID of the meeting you want to join. Let me show you what I mean. You just go to zoom.us and click join a meeting. Now I was told or I got a text message or something that the meeting ID is and you click join. If this is the very first time you've done this on this computer, you will be asked to download just a tiny little Zoom app. I clicked OK, big orange arrow says click on Zoom, and it installs, very easy. It asks what name I want to appear for, my, for me. I can just type Chris and join meeting. And you get the opportunity to say whether or not you want to join with video. And you also do want to join with computer audio. Hi, Jim. Hello. This is the way it opens up at first, but if I click on gallery view, now it puts us in our own little, our own little boxes here. And if you need to sneeze, you might want to mute your audio. You do that by just clicking on the microphone. Now he can't hear me. All right, now show him what it looks like for your side. I can't hear you. Oh, show him what it looks like from your side. Try muting and we'll see the little red microphone. And now we can't hear him. Same thing with the video. But I get a message up there that tells me that I'm muted. It hears that I'm speaking and it tells me that I've muted. It's kind of cool. So to unmute, you just click the microphone again. Click it to mute. And sometimes just pressing the space bar works too. But don't expect it to work every time. <laughs> and then the camera, the same thing. You can turn the camera off and then it just goes to your name turn it back on and it comes on. But what if you need to more fine tune? For example, I have two cameras on this computer and it is the webcam that's being active. What if I don't want that? You click on the little arrow instead and switch to the different camera. There, you can see. So same thing with the microphone. I'm using a headset. If I take the headset off, I might want to change it. So these are the things that when you first join a meeting, people might say they can't see you or they can't hear you. These are the things to, to look at. And if you, when you're ready to leave a meeting, you click leave a meeting down in the lower right hand corner. Now there's one other way to get into a meeting. Let's say that you actually were sent a link and here is a link in an email. So all you have to do then is just click the link. And since I've already downloaded the Zoom app, it just says open Zoom meetings. Join with video, join with audio, and now I might want to make it full screen as well. Hi, Jim. How are we doing? <laughs> doing good. And just one last thing I want to show you, and that is what if you've moved away? You, you, you decided you needed to check your email for some reason. So you go over and you're looking at your email. 
Now, how do you get back to your Zoom meeting? You might be surprised to see it's not up on your browser tabs at all. That's because it's an app. It's down here on your taskbar. You click that and now we're back. OK. Thanks for playing. <laughs> And I'm going to leave meeting. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs>
and then I am done and I've exited the meeting. Hopefully this quick tutorial for students and um, parents shows you how to use Google Meet. It's an amazing, amazing tool, uh, especially in the situation that we're in right now. I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for stopping by today. Okay, so that was Google Meet. And again, pretty much the same as hey, the other, other platforms. And, and as you can see, students, a lot of students will probably be using Google Classroom and Google Meet to meet with their meet with their teachers this year. So it's, this is a good thing to for parents to be familiar with, so that if the student needs help, they can have an idea how to help their students. Okay, so now that we have an idea of how the virtual meetings, oh, I wanted to show you before I move on. I wanted to show you how to access Google Meet. So as he was saying, if you're going to be meeting your teacher or somebody else through Google Meet, they can send you a link to that meeting. But if you wanted to set up your own meeting from the, in Chrome, I'm in the, at the Google page, and if I go to the apps icon, click on that and see right here is Google Meet. So new meeting, I can get a get a meeting link to share. I can start an instant meeting or I can schedule in the Google Calendar. Let me start an instant meeting. And again, you can decide if you want your camera on or off. You can turn your microphone on or off. Join now. And if you wanted to share this information with other people, you would get your link here. You can copy it, email it out to other people can add people, send them e invites if you have their email addresses. And if you want to share your screen, you have the present now option there. And let's see. Turn on a background blur. I guess that would probably be good for my situation where I have a cluttered background. And you have your chat box. Show the participants that are in the room. And again, if when you're ready to leave the call, just hang up the phone. OK, so that's our brief tour of Google Meet. <clears throat> um, OK, so now that we have an idea of how the different platforms work. We need to talk about. Talk about virtual meeting etiquette. So virtual etiquette. Virtual meeting etiquette is a whole new ball game compared to in-person meetings. And here are seven simple virtual meeting etiquette rules and tips. So some do's and don'ts for online meetings. And the first tip is to leave the keyboard alone. So whether you are diligently taking notes like a model employee or sneakily chatting with your worky work work bestie, the sound of your typing is distracting. Of course, that would be a good reason to have your sound off. 
it's not only distracting everyone else in the meeting because your laptop's internal microphone is inches away from your keyboard, it's also preventing you from devoting your full attention to the meeting. So opt for a quality headset or pick up your notebook and pen to take meeting, meeting notes instead of, instead of typing them. Number two, dress appropriately. And I'm sure we've probably heard the stories about people not quite dressed for meetings and being caught on camera in that way. So one of the magical things about working remotely is the freedom to wear anything to work. It's the dream, right? So there's no reason to show your coworkers your PJs in bedhead. So take a few minutes to throw on a clean shirt and brush your hair. And the best part of actually getting ready while working remotely is actually put yourself in the right headspace to be productive. So treat your virtual meeting as if you're actually going to be at the meeting. Yeah, you might not have to wear shoes, but dress appropriately. Okay, be aware of your surroundings. So your coworkers won't be able to hear your ideas or take you seriously when there is a pile of dirty clothes in the corner behind you. You also want to avoid looking like you work from the inside of a cave because of bad lighting. So adjust your work setup so that you face a window or are exposed to plenty of light and make sure your background is professional and work appropriate. That means no beds, unmade or made, in the background, no messy rooms or open closets where everyone can see your clutter, like my background today, and no, in a, no inappropriate artwork. And while kids and pets are adorable and a much needed distraction when you're feeling overwhelmed, your coworkers won't love having to talk over a screaming child or a barking dog. So be mindful of noise and keeping that in mind, mute your microphone when you're not talking. There's nothing more frustrating than hearing that alien echo noise from conflicting microphones. And save everyone from ear splitting madness by joining the meeting while on mute. Unless you live alone, your house is probably pretty noisy these days. And even if you are in a room by yourself, there could be outside noises that are being picked up on your microphone. So muting your microphone when you're not speaking gives other participants the ability to chime in and share their thoughts without, the, without distraction or frustration. And it can get frustrating if somebody's clearing their throat or as she said in her video, sneezing. It, it is really distracting. Okay, next one is speak up. So when you enter a small meeting, around two or five people, announce yourself when you join. It can be awkward to hear the someone just joined ding followed by silence. So when you hop on the meeting, introduce, introduce yourself and say hi. Just make sure you're not interrupting someone mid sentence. Because that's a good place to, um, or a good reason to use chat. You can enter your, your hello in the chat box. Hi, so and so here. That way they know who it is that just joined the meeting. And don't be afraid to project your voice too. Your team will appreciate being able to hear you without having to strain their ears or turn their volume all the way up. Number six is no food allowed. And this can be really distracting too. If you've, especially if the person has their camera and their audio on, and you're there eating a bag of chips and you all you hear is crunch, 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 crunch. Or taking a swallow of something you're. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you, you can pick that up on their microphone. 
So try to eat a snack before your virtual meeting. No one wants to see you stuff your face with chips while discussing important business matters. Not only is it distracting to others, you won't be able to focus on the task at hand because you'll be worrying about dropping crumbs all over your keyboard. And seven, stay seated and stay present. It may be tempting to check your inbox or carry on side conversation during a dull moment in a meeting, but don't do it. You might miss out on key information or an opportunity to give input. If you're using your webcam, use attentive body language, sit up straight, don't make big extraneous movements, and don't let your eyes wander too much. <clears throat> so I hope you feel more comfortable with the thought of attending virtual meetings. And take the time and experiment with friends and family. Like I said, if you have Google, a Google email, you can set up a Google Meet real easily with friends and family and just, just play around with it so you feel more comfortable that way when you do have to attend a virtual meeting, it won't be that really awkward. I don't know what I'm doing. What am I supposed to do here? Feeling that you would get. Um, it is weird at first. And I've been using virtual meetings for months now and it still is a little strange at times, especially when you're teaching a class and you're not sure is anybody listening? Are they paying attention? Do they understand what I'm saying? So with the virtual meetings, it really does help to have more feedback. And if you do find this helpful, please like our video and feel free to share with your friends or anybody else who may benefit from it. So thank you for joining me tonight and we'll see you next time.